Now let us learn on the topic backup and recovery. By backup and recovery, we are trying to safeguard the productive data. That is, we all know that data gets continuously persisted at save points to the persistent storage and also the logs are continuously written to the persistent storage on every commit. But in cases of any unplanned events where the persistent storage gets damaged, gets crashed, these backups help us in restoring the system to the point just before the crash. So these backups can be triggered with the help of the uh, standard feature within HANA which triggers it to the file system backup or we can trigger it using third party tools where third party agents will execute the backup and move these backups to third party backup servers. So in this session we will learn about what exactly backups will do and how do we trigger these backups what are the backup scenarios and how do we do the recovery what are the recovery scenarios and what are the tools that would be used to trigger backup and do the recovery and concepts like storage snapshot and database copy. Firstly, let us understand about HANA persistence. As studied in architecture session, HANA persistence mainly contains data and logs. That is the productive data, the data which is getting changed on day to day basis and the transaction logs that is the redo logs and along with data there is another type of lock called undo locks. In the picture shown here, we see that SAP HANA database as main memory where the data is kept and the data is accessed directly and any data changes are returned to persistence layer that is the log volume which holds the data changes that is it records the data changes all the transaction logs that is the redo logs will be returned to the log volume whereas the actual data which is changed at regular save points which are automatic in nature are returned to the data volumes along with the undo logs undo logs are necessary for any undoing of the activity if you want to revert to the previous point then we can play these undo logs and revert to a particular point. So by data we mean it's the actual SQL data, undo logs, modeling data, modeling data which means the information models, objects like analytical views, attribute views, calculation views, analytical privileges, procedures and the written process of this data is asynchronous it is not synchronous so it means every time the data is changed it is not written the data is written only at save points at a particular save point the data gets returned to the data volumes in the data area which is a part of the persistence layer so as shown here destination is data area within the persistence layer and coming to logs, it is the transaction logs, the redo logs, which record the change that is done to the data. And these are written synchronously. The commit happens synchronously. Whenever there is a change, that should be recorded. It should be committed immediately to the log volume. That is a part of the log area, again, a part of the persistence layer. So, this persistence layer itself acts as a data safeguarding layer because in case of any unplanned event where the system gets crashed due to software failure 
or uh, uh, due to any sort of failure could be hardware also then the data which is stored in the persistence layer is used to recover the system to the stable point just before the crash so in that scenario what happens the data volumes will help in recovering the data and log volumes which have the transaction logs will help in reaching a particular point in time we can just replay the transaction logs and go to a particular point in time we can choose the logs which are stable and then just replay it to reach that particular point so as shown here at save point change the data and undo logs are written from memory to disk which is automatic in nature every five minutes is the default period once we install the HANA database server by default save point duration is kept as every five minutes so every five minutes we have automatic save points running and this is customizable there is a parameter which has to be customized with the value that we want it can be set to run every minute or probably every 10 minutes based on our requirement based on the change the database would see and this is the picture where you can see see that the first point is the data save point to the persistent storage then further we have the locks the transaction locks written until the next save point this is the next save point so at this save point we have the data written here and these are the transaction logs which get returned to log volume and this is the next data save point which is again returned to the data volumes we should know that every component has its own data and log volume so every components activity will be logged to the particular log volume and its data gets written to its particular data volume now let's move on to study more about what is backup in the topic of backup first let us study what are backups backups save the payload that is the actual data of the data area and log area to different locations to secure data from hazardous situations on the server they are performed while the database is running and data backup save the content of the data area to a different location in the file system so by this we mean backups contain the actual payload that is the actual production data of the data area and log area that is it combines both the actual data and the transaction logs which are different which are returned to different locations could be to a backup server as i said or to any secure location we can have a separate file system layout for storing the backups alone on the server which could be a file system stored backup or as i said take these backups to a backup server probably in normal case what happens is we would have a separate file system for storing the backups on the file system then from here it is taken to the backup server so in case of any crash we can use the backup present in the file system storage itself or otherwise fetch the backups from the backup server and restore the system and make sure while we run the backup the database should be up and running only then the backups can be created so to ensure optimal performance sap hana database holds the bulk of its data in memory but however it uses persistent storage as explained in the previous slide 
to fall back in case of any failure we make use of persistent storage during normal database operation data is automatically saved from memory to disk at regular save points along with redo logs that is understood this can be used to restart the system in case of unplanned power failures as an immediate case but if the disk is crashed or corrupted we need to use the safeguarded data and logs to regain the system status and how do we provide this this safeguarded system data is derived from the backups taken at regular intervals so at regular intervals we can trigger the backup manually or schedule it using certain tools and then have these backups loaded onto the safer locations that is to the backup servers or the stable file system layouts and the impact of backups on system performance is negligible so even when the system is operating in productive environment that is even when customers are using the system for productive use we can still trigger the backup as the performance impact of these backups on the system is very minimal so that means users can continue to work normally while the backup is running and when it comes to customer specific changes in the configuration settings in ini files this must be backed up manually and has to be restored either before recovery or after and another plan what can be executed is we can enable automated fs backup to a backup server using a script as i said you can use the standard tools available with hana to trigger the backup manually or if you want to automate it to run every day or uh sometime every day then or every week then it means that we need a script in place a cron in place which can run this backup job based on the period that we want so using this we can specify whether the data and log backups are returned to the file system or using third party backup tools to a backup server and what are the advantages we see that using backups we can perform point in time recovery that is we can fall back to a particular point in time that we want or we can restore system to a particular backup point we don't have to replay the transaction logs here just if we want to restore the system to a particular data backup point that also is possible and this is the picture see database backup contains log backup data backup and the configuration files which are to be done manually because with the standard backup procedure the configuration files that is the ini files which hold the customized settings will not be backed up these has to be backed up manually and then recovered manually and see this is the persistent storage where log volumes data volumes and configuration files are there so as a part of data backup we have both log volumes and data volumes as a part of configuration files backup we have only the configuration files which is done manually as explained and how to backup what are the standard tools that we have to backup firstly it is the hana studio tool using the backup editor wizard we can trigger the backup there and we have a backup catalog available in the hana studio which helps us in triggering the backup we will come back to more details into how to use hana studio to trigger the backup how to find the backup option and uh, on selecting the backup option how the backup runs where are the backup files are stored will be explained our next tool is using the sql command line that is stb sql command line using the sql commands how do we trigger the backup which works similar to hana studio again and then thirdly using the dba cockpit which is a sabab based tool how do we trigger the backup 
and should know that using DBA cockpit tool we can schedule we can plan the backups to run at regular intervals and as explained destination for the backups would be the file system or third-party backup tools which takes the backups to third-party backup servers coming to third-party backup tools third-party backup tools uses an interface called backend for SAP HANA which performs all the actions needed to write the backup data to external storage so to use this third-party tool we need to install the third-party tool third-party backup tool which installs an agent on the server so with this tool installation third-party tool agent gets installed which talks to the database using the API interface if you see here this is the third-party backup agent which talks to the database using the API interface called backend for SAP HANA and on the other side this third-party backup agent talks to the backup server where the backups are written this could be a tape based backup and what is this backend for SAP HANA as I said it's an interface is an API that can be implemented by a third-party backup agent and what are the features that it offers provides functions for backup recovery query and delete you can delete the backups as well and third-party backup agent runs on the SAP HANA server that is the database server communicates with the third-party backup server so on one side it talks to the database volumes and log volumes on the database server and other side it talks to the backup server so it has to be installed on the database server to talk to the data volumes and log volumes and from there it talks to backup server on the other side and these backups are transferred through pipes memory pipes in the form of pages and full integration with SAP HANA studio is possible with this tool so using backend agent we can trigger backups from studio as well it has full integration with the HANA studio tool and backend can be configured for both the data backups and for log backups as explained so after a backup tool has been installed we can start to backup and recover the HANA database without making any further changes so once the backup tool is installed the backup agents keep running and we can continue to trigger a backup and do the recovery as in the normal situation we can also write a script that is a cron job which can run at regular intervals using this backup agent and send the backups to safer locations that is to a backup server so this is all about the backend interface and for backend backup there is a specific location which is not customizable so using third party backup agents the backups are first written to the file system which has a default location under global directory which I will show you so this path is not customizable at all whereas coming to file system stored backups which are default in nature are customizable we can uh, dynamically change that location while triggering the backup or there are parameters to change the location of file system stored backups now let's move on to understand the concept of recovery once we are backed up and we have a crash in place or we see that uh, some data is incorrectly developed some objects are incorrectly developed we want to fall back to a point before this activity then recovery can be done using the backups and what are the necessary privileges needed for doing the backup and recovery 
By definition, recovery is a technique to restore the database to a state desired following a server crash, database crash, or in the event of data corruption. So technically, recovery serves as a procedure or a set of techniques where we can restore the database to a stable point. It can be used at events like server crash, database crash, software crash, or data corruption as a whole, or the hardware corruption. So at all these situations, we can use the backups taken and recover the system for continuous availability. And during recovery, note that database is not accessible. Users cannot use the system when we are recovering the system. Whereas while doing backups, the system was usable. Users were using the system, but when we do the recovery, system runs in the offline mode. Sometimes in the diagnosis mode then it becomes online once the recovery is complete and there are certain uh, prerequisites which must be met certain points must be kept in mind with respect to backup as a prerequisite we should note that for doing a recovery we should have an initial data backup available at least one data backup must be available and until this first data backup is made the logs are written in overwrite mode there are two modes in which logs can be written one is normal other is overwrite so until the first backup is triggered these logs transaction logs are written in overwrite mode that is circular mode so once the first backup is done these transaction logs get written in normal mode that is it is not cyclic in nature, it is not overwriting the existing logs, but it creates as a new log in the new log buffer. So we have every change recorded which is available as a part of the transaction log. Whereas in the overwrite mode, the changes which are recorded gets overwritten with the new changes. And before recovery, we should make sure that data and log backups must be available in file system or through the backup tool. That is, for recovery, anyways, we need the log and data backups, that is, backup files. They should be copied to the file system to do the recovery or through backup tool, they must be accessible from the backup server directly. And note that a SAP HANA database cannot be recovered to another database which is running with a lower software version. That is, if I want to do a database copy, that is take the backup of system A to system B, that is to build system B, system B cannot run with a software version lower than system A. That means technically it should be having either the same software version or a higher software version then only the recovery can work otherwise recovery will fail and if recovery fails at any point it must be repeated we should repeat the recovery to regain the system status and uh, we know that the configuration path for data and log backups is valid throughout the system. In case of multiple nodes, that is multi-host systems, the backup paths are not specific to hosts. It should be specific to the system again. And backup and recovery always applies to the old database, not just to a particular host or not just to a particular database object. And how to recover? We have standard tools again to do the recovery. That is using SAP HANA Studio and using the SQL command line, using an SQL command.
that is STV SQL commands. We will come into how to do that. Now moving on to understanding what are the necessary privileges required for a user to run backup and recovery. Any user who wants to do backup should have backup admin or backup operator roles. Coming to differences between backup admin and backup operator, system privilege backup admin can perform all backup related operations including backup deletion and configuration. So it has the complete power over backups. Whereas coming to system privilege backup operator, it can only perform backups. So that means backup operator has the minimal authorization. It has power to do only backups. Whereas backup admin can not only trigger backups, it can even delete the backups. It can do configuration settings for backups. So backup admin has full power over backups. And next is catalog read. A user with catalog read can also trigger backups. This is again a system privilege. Coming to recovery, SIDADM user is more than enough for doing a recovery. So while logging into HANA Studio, we have to log in with SIDADM user and then start the recovery. This is why because when the system is not available, we do the recovery. When the system is not available, database is not available. So we cannot use any database user to do the recovery, but we have to use the operating system admin user for doing the recovery. And next is about opening the backup editor. As I said, in HANA Studio, we have a backup editor. So to open this backup editor, a user must have backup admin or catalog read system privileges. So any of these two will help. And coming to delete backups, backup admin role is more than enough. I would repeat for doing the backups, we should have either backup admin or backup operator and catalog read to correct if I have gone wrong. Backups need backup admin and catalog read both. So either it could be backup admin or backup operator. Coming to opening the backup editor, we need backup admin and catalog read both. It's not just one of them. It's both backup admin and catalog read. Both are system privileges and any user trying to open the backup editor and trigger the backup should have both the privileges. So this is about the privileges. So make sure you create a separate user for backup activity and assign the necessary roles required could be a backup operator only along with catalog read or backup admin and catalog read and then proceed to trigger the backup either using the HANA studio or you can use the SQL command line to do this and the reason why backup operator is not given the complete power is to have an user who does not have full access because sometimes what can happen uh, the backup user can delete backups unknowingly so to avoid any such malicious deletion of backups we have this concept of using backup operator which has powers to do backups only that is trigger backups only now let's move on to understand more about data area backup so by data area backup entire database data structure and contents are backed up to the backup servers as explained so entire payload of all the components of the hana database are backed up you see here it shows name server index server 
and statistic server again for access engine also we have a backup file created if since access engine is an optional component it can be either used or can be removed it is not displayed here so as a standard we have two backup files for name server and one for index server and one for statistic server and this is the convention of the backup files which gets created it comes with a prefix and this prefix is customizable you can keep any name of your choice say complete backup or today's backup so you can choose any name of your choice and volume id is automatically added the volume id here is automatically added and backup id for every backup is unique say i trigger a backup now it has one id i trigger a backup tomorrow it has another id so these backup ids are unique in nature and this is how the backup files would look so with different conventions of the volume id like 0 1 1 1 2 1 3 1 we should understand which component these backups apply to and location as i said for backend that is third party tools this is the location this is not changeable cannot be customized it is under usr sap sid is global stv backend so if we use third party tools for triggering the backup we see that backups are returned to this location before they are sent to the backup server and coming to file system the locations can be customized dynamically or using parameters shown here you have to navigate to global.ini go to persistence section here we have the base path parameters base path data backup data volume log backup log volumes so see the data backup and log backup these are the default locations under instance we have a backup directory under that we have log and data which are the default locations or as i said we can have dedicated file system mounts for storing the backups and provide the path of those dedicated file system backup locations for parameter base path data backup and base path log backup and for data volume log volume we have already understood the standard paths are like this which are again customizable while doing the installation we can have dedicated mount points for storing the data area and log area and those locations are by default set after the installation or during the installation so uh, every backup file created comprises of following elements that is a path and a prefix so while triggering the backup we have to mention a path then comes the prefix that is along with the backup name that is we mention the path and along with the prefix then it, the prefix gets attached here and this is how we have the backup files created in the backup location and the path and the prefix are optional as said by default we will have a standard prefix suggested say complete backup we can alter that or leave it as it is and path again we can use the standard paths available from this parameter or we can customize it dynamically to the location that we want that is hmm. and system adds unique suffix for each service for each backup file name this is the suffix and this is standard and not customizable for each component the suffix is unique and we should go by the standard here so for data safety we are storing backups to safer backup locations which could be external backup locations and recommended is we should never have the backup location on the same file system as data and log areas 
and all the files for a particular data backup are written to the same location of uh, the files belonging to the same data backup can never be written to different locations that is you cannot choose to write the backup file for component name server to one location and then the remaining components like index server statistics server and access engine servers backup files to another location this is not possible all the component backup files are location are located to one location that is one destination always so one data backup always points to one location it cannot be split across multiple locations so this was about data area backup now let us understand about backup editor which is a part of hana studio sap hana studio offers backup editor page which helps us to monitor the running backups in the overview tab and configuration tab offers configuration setting possibilities we can set the destination for data backup destination for log backup choose whether we want file based uh, backup that is file system based backup or backend backup and specify the backup interval also enable automatic log backup or disable it and also uh, for larger backups certain times in large sap ana systems data backup files might be larger than the maximum file size that can be stored on the respective file system there could be a limitation the configuration options allows us to specify the maximum file size for backup files so if a backup file exceeds this size it gets split into several files that is for splitting a particular backup file or all the backup files we can use this option to limit this just choose this limit maximum file size specify the file size here and then once this threshold is reached for a particular backup file it gets split into multiple files so in that case we can see for a single component we can have multiple backup files created this is possible only in case of larger hana databases so to open the configuration of backup settings we have to choose backup editor from the hana studio we will see how to do that well now i have logged into the system in hana studio see this is the backup settings that i explain under global.ini you have to go to persistent section under that you can see the base path data backup default location is this and base path log volume location is this sorry the log backup location is this and the log volume location is this and the data volume location is this we know that while installing we mentioned hana data hn as the data volume location that is the data area and for log area we chose hana log hn so anything that is set apart from the default value is highlighted here with a green color circle if it is at system level if it is at host level we will have a green color circle here if it is in case of a multi node system since it is at the system level as i said the backup and recovery is always at the system level not at the host level see that the path is mentioned here in the system column and coming back to backup locations base path data backup and base path log backup are the default locations which are set under persistent section in global.ini file now let me navigate to backup editor i have to click on this backup editor so this opens the backup editor and this shows the current running backup since no running backup is processed 
there's nothing shown here and there was no successful data backup since the system was installed and no snapshot there's something called as storage snapshot which is triggered at the storage level the details of which can be seen here in the backup editor and once i start the backup probably we can see this and coming to configuration you can see that as i told you okay you can see the backend settings you can do a backend setting here if it is a backend based backup you can specify the location if it is file system based since backend setting is not done on this database we don't have anything enabled here whereas if you come to file based data backup and log backup settings see that file option is selected here and the destination is already offered this destination is the default location which comes with installation which is also present in the data backup and log backup settings under persistence section in global.ini and here you can see the backup interval for log backup to be every 15 minutes which is automatic in nature so I have to enable this checkbox. If I disable this, automatic backups will not run. See, as mentioned here, if I disable automatic log backup, that is moving logs from log area to a backup location. If that does not happen, it makes sense that log area becomes full. And once log area becomes full, database freezes. That is, it goes to hung situation and it's not operational anymore so it makes sense to have regular log backups to free up log buffers in the log area which can take new transaction logs so this is about the backup editor and there is something called as backup catalog here we'll come back to that and now let us understand about size estimation how do we estimate the size of backups? One option is that simple option when we trigger the backup, backup window will show us the backup size. We will understand in the next slide. When I trigger the backup using the ANA Studio, it will show me the size of this backup what I am triggering. Or in other way, I can estimate the size of a backup with the help of system table which holds the details about the data size this system table is m converter statistics so with the help of sql console i can issue these commands the first command here select sum allocated page size from the system table m converter statistics will give me the complete size of the backup it will sum of sum up all the component sizes and then issue me the backup size if i issue the second command which is for particular volume ids from the same system table which groups by volume id this shows backup sizes of each component as i said each component will have its own backup file like how it has data volume and log volumes using this command I can find out the backup size of each component of the HANA database server so just issue this and then we will be able to get the information of the same let me check that let me go to SQL console issue the command to check the complete size yes this is the size which is in the form of pages so this has to be converted to kilobytes or megabytes to understand and if I want to check the size of each 
volume ID that is also possible let me issue the command for identifying the size of each component see we can check the size of each component here volume ID and H size can be estimated here no doubt this is for the index server this is for the statistics and this is for the name server this is how we find out the size of the backup file so that you can estimate how much size you would want on the backup file system or on the backup server also estimate on the time period of which the backup would run if I run the backup now estimating the size of the backup I can say that yes the backup would run for one hour or probably two hours so it helps in analyzing how long the backups can run and also analyzing how much space the backup would require on the file system or on the backup server so this was about understanding how we estimate the backup size for estimating on the file system size required for storing the backups and also analyzing the time period required for executing this backup now let us move on to trigger the backup now we will use the backup editor in the HANA studio to trigger the backup so as shown in the picture here we will have to right click on the system in the systems view choose the option backup and then we will get the screen where it will tell us the backup type and the destination type that is already chosen in backup settings and as told backup destination can be either customized or use the standard location that we have and then specify the prefix that we want this is the default prefix that is provided by the system this can be customized I can mention today's date or anything that I want any text that I want to understand the backup files then execute this is how the backup runs and using SQL command this is the standard command that we use use backup data using file we can mention the path and the prefix which are optional otherwise just give backup data using file and then it does the backup and third tool is using the DBA calendar as I told you you can navigate to DBA planning calendar this is how the calendar would look like after going to DBA cockpit this is available through DBA cockpit transaction through DBA cockpit tool in the ASABAP system that is in the Solman system normally we use this in the Solman system where HANA database would be configured or if there is an ABAP solution running on top of HANA database yes we can use the DBA cockpit transaction of that and navigate to DBA calendar under jobs and select the period of the backup we can make it a repetitive execution also so we can set recurrence and then make it run every day or every week or every month now let us trigger the backup using the backup editor to understand how it runs so let me right click on the system say backup so as I said if you see here this shows me the estimated backup size of 1.57 GB since this system does not have any big packages any solution running on top of it the size of the database is very small in normal situations if any solution is running or if any data is populated on top of HANA by any sort of replications or connecting any non SAP systems using uh, smart data access then we will have bigger size 
shown here for the database and the backup so backup type is chosen as complete data backup it's a complete data backup destination type as shown in the setting is file based and backup destination as I said goes to this location and this I can customize I can choose anything I can say uh, give today's date say 7th then a directory by this name will be created but let me not do that I'll choose the standard location okay and prefix again I can change it to today's date 7th okay 7 Jan okay and see as mentioned here note that the customer specific changes to the HANA database configuration that is INI files are not saved as a part of data backup they are to be backed up manually probably best option would be to set a file system backup you can have a file system backup that is backup of all the mounts to a backup server we can use the same backup server to have this file system backup store not the data backup not the database backup to be specific so once this is set we will click on next this gives a summary of the backup we have the SID host IP the version and then the complete data backup file backup destination and the prefix that we have chosen so once I click on finish the backup starts to run yeah here the backup would fail because the allocated size is not enough for backup to be completed the file system size must be enhanced here to create the backup see if I open the log file log file is the backup dot log which would tell me the full information so the progress of the backup or any issues with the backup is logged into backup dot log here see what it says this backup could not be completed as the allocation failed okay see now I have navigated to the file system location where the backups got stored Although the backup did not complete we have the backup files written but it's not complete we cannot rely on this backup see I have navigated to the standard backup location which was used under this we have data and log backup directories so navigating to data we see that the prefix what I gave with 7 Jan and the backup ID is created for each component as I said we have five backup files two for the name server third is for the one for the index server one for the statistics and other for the access engine see navigating to backup catalog under backup editor would show us the previous backup information see it is the status shows red in color since the backup failed the backup failed because we don't have enough RAM on the server to take the backup yeah see this is the detailed information this is the backup ID status is failed and yeah file based backup and the duration throughput and the size see it is not complete the estimated size was 1.5 GB whereas on the 26 KB is backed up here and yeah and to know which are the respective component files we can navigate here and check for name server it is the 1 1 and 0 1 
statistics server 3 1 index server 4 1 access engine is 2 1 so with this you can know which backup file belongs to which component so that was about using the backup editor in the HANA studio next is using SQL command so as shown here we can use this command directly backup data using file that is file based and we can by option present the path and the prefix those are required otherwise it will take the default values available and do the backup and the backup execution is similar to what was there in the backup editor HANA studio and third is using the DBA cockpit DBA calendar as I said you have to navigate to jobs and then go to DBA calendar and schedule the backup there this is the DBA cockpit transaction which I have chosen and you see that there are many systems configured here for monitoring so what I have to do I have to choose the system here say HAN and then navigate under jobs choose the DBA calendar for system HAN see we can see that there is an option already set for December 27 for a data backup and there's a frequency with which it runs so if I select second so there was no backup on 27th we had a backup triggered and just or you can just choose any date of your choice and select a data backup see this was the backup information it was finished successfully you can see the log and the program log so if I want to set a job I would say run a backup on 11th of January just select this and then yes Is complete backup see you can either execute immediately or add you can go to recurrence this is the setting for the parameter you can use the default ones or customize go to recurrence and then in recurrence you can mention the days and say every three days every three hours every week or only once run it only once or say every day you can choose the time since I chose 2 a.m. here it has taken 2 a.m. or you can customize to 11 and check this so all this is possible if I say 2 a.m. and every 3 day or say uh, every week I say every Saturday okay and time it has taken by default since I've chosen 2 a.m. here and I can say uh, end by uh, I can give a date like uh, 10 days from the say 21 and then add and the job gets scheduled with this so that was about using DBA calendar option for scheduling the backup now let's move on to understand log area backup so by log area backup we mean the backup of transaction logs first of all let us understand how these transaction logs work see the logs are first written to log buffers in memory in memory we have something called as log buffers and the size of which is set as 1 MB by default so there are many such log buffers being written in memory and when the log buffer becomes full or a commit entry is written these log buffers are written to log segments in the log area so there are multiple log segments in the log volumes 
and log buffers whenever they become full or on a commit they get returned to log segments and each log segment is a combination of many log buffers many log buffers right into one particular log segment and that's how the log area gets filled up so as i said when the log buffer becomes full or a commit and this write process is circular okay and the size of log segment is 1 gb in nature once the size of the log segment reaches 1 gb this log segment gets closed it will not accept any more log buffers whereas a new log buffer comes to a new log segment then and coming to log backup log segments from the log area are backed up to log backup files as i said log area is filled with log segments many such log segments which are backed up to log files and this circular process of writing until all file system lun space is consumed with no with not backed up log information so this write process is termed as circular in nature and log backup saves log information out of the log segments into log backup files as i seen and log segment files are not deleted in file system in log mode normal these log segments will remain they are not deleted but these log segments once they get backed up they become free to accept new log buffers that is they become empty again but log segments are never deleted from the file system in case of normal mode of log backup whereas when it comes to overwrite it gets deleted a new one gets overwritten on it and the backed up log segments are um, the log the backed up log segments as i said are defined as empty and can be reconsumed for reallocation on the file system that is reallocation of new log buffers again and when does the log backup get backed up there are certain situations like when the log segment becomes full when the log segment is closed after exceeding the configured time threshold we can set a time threshold for triggering log backups so when this time threshold is reached the log segment get closed and it is written to the backup and when the database is started so at the start of the database all these log segments are backed up again so when it becomes full or based on the time threshold or when the database is started we see that the backups run for the log segments and as i was explaining there are two modes of log backup one is normal other is overwrite normal is the default setting it keeps log segments until backup and automatic log backup is available for this option this normal mode is suitable for all productive environments so what happens in normal mode is that the log segments are available until the backup is triggered all the changes recorded are available in the log segments whereas in the case of override the log segments are overwritten there is no log backup performed the log segments are freed by save points actually and they suit only the test environment with the help of normal mode we can restore the system to a particular point since we have log backups available restoring of any available data backup with log replay to the last committed state is possible so we can either restore any available data backup directly without having to replay the logs or since we have log backups we can replay this logs in the log backups and restore to a particular point in time using the normal mode whereas in case of overwrite mode this restore to a particular point in time is not possible at all since we don't have log backups so in this overwrite mode we have to restore using a data backup only so we can 
these to a particular save point only. So for a productive environment, for all the productive systems, it is recommended that log mode normally is used because it provides the highest security with regard to the restoration of data for a recovery of the SAP HANA database. In this normal log mode, we see that the system automatically creates log backups that can be used for a recovery in addition to the data backups. But however, more backup space is required in this log mode due to the log backups also being triggered. Therefore, an operational concept for administrating data and log backups is a prerequisite for using log mode normal. So, normal needs more space for storing the backups, but it offers complete data safety. Whereas, overwrite needs lesser space since it does not take log backup. It overrides the existing log segments in the log area. And hence, no log backups are necessary. And restoring to a particular data backup is possible. Point in time is not possible. Now, more information about configuring backup as I showed you in ANA Studio in the configuration tab under global.ini. Under persistence, we have the backup locations. Base path data backup, base path log backup will mention the default locations that are being used. And there are certain parameters, important parameters, which play a key role in triggering the backup. See, for automatic log backup, in backup editor under configurations, we have a checkbox to choose enable automatic backup. That is one option. Otherwise, under global.ini, under persistence, we have a parameter by name enable, enable auto log backup. So by choosing the value yes for this parameter, we are sure that there is a regular automatic log backup running in the system. And coming to time threshold based on which the log segments are backed up, the setting for the time threshold is done using log backup timeout underscore yes parameter. By default, the value of this parameter is 900 seconds, but we can customize this based on the environment we work in. We can either reduce it or increase it. And also, the log mode parameter can be seen here, which is normal by default. And log buffer size is 1 MB as I told and log buffer count is 8 and yeah this is the other option where you can choose the automatic log backup under backup editor under configurations you can enable this checkbox or in global.ini as shown here you can set this parameter to value yes for automatic log backups to run at intervals specified by log backup timeout in seconds. So by specifying an appropriate time interval for log backups, we enable to recover an SAP HANA database with minimal data loss. So lesser the value of this log backup timeout, greater to the extent that we can restore the HANA database to the best point possible. Now let's study about the backup catalog. I have already shown the backup catalog in the HANA studio. What does backup catalog show is the status of the running backup or the logs of the backups which are executed and more details about these backups like backup ID and the backup files, file names, size of the backup, and the performance of the backup, that is throughput of the backup. And we can also read the backup.log there in case of any issues, any deviations that we see. So to be straight, backup catalog shows an overview of running and finished backups. 
we can navigate to backup details area and check for more details like backup start completion duration size throughput time and a breakdown for each service so each service level information can be seen and how does backup catalog get this information there are certain monitoring views like m backup catalog and m backup catalog files which are necessary for providing information to backup catalog either we can do select on these backup monitoring files directly and get the information or navigate to backup catalog and get the information and we should also understand that there is a backup of backup catalog which runs backup catalog is backed up and versioned after every completed backup operation which is very useful because this allows the backup catalog to be accessed during a recovery so even in situations such as when log mode is in overwrite where logs are not written the backup catalog is still backed up and the backup catalog is assigned a name in the following format and is stored in the same location as log backup so this is the format how the backup of the backup catalog is kept it is stored with the unique backup id number and how do we monitor the backup using the backup.log file we can either navigate to backup catalog and see this log file or navigate to the file system get inside the hana instance hostname directory under that there is a directory by name trace under that we will find the backup.log file so using that again we can find out and next is using the script we can call the monitoring view m backup catalog files and check the backup files their size to know more information about the backup if the backup catalog is not working this is the second option of using the script so as a whole backup catalog enables us to determine whether a recovery is possible or choose which data on log backup is used to use to recover the database and determine which backup files are no longer needed so that was all about backups now let us move on to understand the recovery topic so let us understand in what situations we need a recovery first situation would be when the data area is unusable if the data area is unusable and all the data changes after the last complete data backup are still available in the log backups and log area the data from committed transactions that was in memory at the time of failure can be recovered so even when the data area is unusable using the backups we can recover to the latest committed point and when the second situation could be when the log area is unusable if the log area is unusable it is only possible to replay the log backups right as a consequence any changes that were made after the most recent log backup will be lost and in addition all the transactions that were opened during the log backup will be rolled back so again and the log area becomes unusable we are still able to recover the system so it is still possible to recover the database to a point in time without the existing log backups as well so just by replaying the logs or rolling back the logs in the log area we can still have the recovery even though we don't have the log backups but no doubt for recovery both the data and the log backups are used when the data backup has been successfully restored the log entries from the log backups are automatically replayed so for this we in the recovery wizard we need to specify the option initialize log area to prevent the recovery of entries from the unusable log area 
so these are the situations so coming back to the slide here see the scenarios as i explained this crash of data or log area or if you want to reset to a particular point or perform a database copy that is to create another system say for example we have a production system we want to create a test system we can build the test system by using the backup and recovering it on the test system and procedures like we can recover to status before backup or to a particular point in time or we can recover to a specific backup and what are the conditions for a recovery we all know that the database needs to be shut down for the recovery and whenever a recovery is running it should never be cancelled and if a recovery fails it should be restarted again and recovery to lower software versions is not possible as i explained before it should be either equal to the version or it should be greater than the version of the source system and at least one backup must be available before executing backup there should be one initial backup which must be executed before executing the recovery and prerequisites before i run a recovery the hana database software must be installed so that an initial database exists and then the backup can run and ensure that the target system and the source system have identical configurations that is if i am creating a test system from a production system test system should have a database software already installed and this initial database must be running and secondly this test system should have the same number of nodes as the production system that is it should have the same configuration for the recovery to work and user with backup admin system role and password of sid adm users are required so we need a user with backup admin system role and its credential and sid adm user credential and backup files must be kept in a location which are accessible again so this is how with the prerequisites we are good to start the recovery so how do we perform the recovery is what we have to understand next using the same set of tools like hana studio and stb not the stb but the command line tool we can do the recovery so from hana studio again we have to right click on the system in the systems view select the recover option and there are the three phases here data recovery log recovery restart so once we click on recovery it takes us through three boxes that is three phases first is about using the data backup or snapshot second is whether we have to use the log backups or log that is available in the log area to be replayed and then finally restart phase okay and the status of recovery is logged in backup.log file which is time to time so whenever we want to understand the status of recovery we can navigate to backup.log and understand so this was about using the hana studio now coming to command line tool we have a python script delivered which is called as recoversys.py so using the wait option any administrator can call the script with the required parameters they can specify the recovery target time recovery type and further options so issue this recover sys dot py python script on the server with the admin user and then probably uh, using the wait option would work because if the database size is big the wait option helps without having a time out there so using both hana studio and command line tool where the python script runs we can run the backup with this recovery sys.py script 
when the administrator calls this with the required option the script further stops the sap ana database prepares and executes the recovery and after the master name server of the sap ana database has started successfully the script terminates but note that at this point the recovery is not complete yet we normally recommend to use the wait option so that the recovery is dot py runs until the recovery of all the components is completed successfully so we should not assume that once the recovery says dot py script ends if we don't use it with wait option ends that the system is recovered no it means that only the name server is recovered only the master name server so use it with double if and wait option to make sure all the components are recovered now coming to recovery check there are certain scripts or i would say programs available which automatically checks the backup files for corruption before triggering backups so two such files are stb backup dag and other is the stb backup check backup dag checks whether we can reach a specified recovery target within the available backup so it analyzes the backup files to tell us whether we can reach a specified recovery target or not coming to backup check it checks the contents of the backup files for consistency it checks whether there is any corruption in the backup files or not so it ensures that consistent backup files are used for the backup so that was about the recovery topic so now we have understood the backup and recovery topics now let us move on to understand what is a storage snapshot storage snapshots are triggered by tools provided from the storage hardware level these are similar to backups similar in the sense they create database snapshots but with the help of storage tools which are offered by the hardware vendors so this takes place at the storage level not at the database level what it does is it captures the content of the sap ana data area at a particular point in time and as a consistent database state as i said it is triggered as a database snapshot which is a read only snapshot when db is online so db must be online when we are taking this storage snapshot see we know that a database backup is written to a separate storage location but a storage snapshot needs to be manually stored in a location that is physically separate from the sap ana data area so it makes sense to have a dedicated location for storing storage snapshot as well and sap hana can be recovered in a single procedure with two options here using a storage snapshot and using a using a storage snapshot in combination with log backups but there is a drawback with the storage snapshot it does not check the integrity of the data whereas backups will have integrity check automatically run whereas storage snapshots do not have any check on the integrity of the data that the snapshot holds so in this two options present here the first option is not a safer option so the second option is recommended as a safer option because it uses the log backups which have integrity check which is already executed along with it so whenever we are trying to use a storage snapshot it makes sense to combine it with a log backup so that the integrity check is involved in this and coming to recovery using this storage snapshot it is done using the storage tool using which we transfer the storage snapshot to the data area of the hana database and then finally using the hana studio call the recover option by right clicking on the system and use the storage snapshot as a basis for doing the recovery in the recovery wizard so first we copy the snapshot using the storage tool then we trigger the recovery using the and we should note that 
all recovery options are possible with this storage snapshot that is point in time recovery using log backups or logs from the log area or just the point in time recovery using the snapshots and after the recovery SAP HANA automatically deletes these internal data snapshot from the data area so once the recovery is done HANA itself deletes the snapshot that we have copied to the data area using the storage tool so that's how using a storage snapshot which is supported by the hardware vendor tools we can still have a recovery you can safeguard the data and do the recovery now let us understand how to trigger the storage snapshot how do we create a storage snapshot so log into sap ana studio we have to first prepare the database for the storage snapshot firstly using the storage tool we have to create a storage snapshot on the sap hana data area and then come back to hana studio confirm the storage snapshot as successful and for this an entry including the external backup id is written to the backup catalog so backup catalog also holds information about the storage snapshot which is triggered which is identified with a backup id an external backup id and as i said hana automatically deletes the internal snapshot from sap data area once it is confirmed or abandoned so first we have to prepare in the hana studio then take the snapshot using the storage tools and then finally confirm using the studio and then we can navigate to backup catalog and verify the backup id and its completion this is the option in the studio where we choose storage snapshot and this is the prepare option so we will assign it a name which gets added to the catalog and coming to sql command line we have these standard commands which can be used for triggering the storage snapshot use backup data create snapshot comment with the snapshot name or backup data close snapshot backup id successful this is for closing that is confirming this is for preparing first command is for preparing which is this step and second step is for confirming that the storage snapshot backup is completed so this first command is the option one here and then we use the storage tool to take the snapshot and the second command is the option 3 where we confirm that the snapshot is completed so this is how we trigger the storage snapshot now let's understand the topic of database copy as i said we can create multiple systems from a copy of one system but there are certain conditions to do a copy like for example the node configuration should be same and there is a condition on the software version also either it should be the same version level or a higher version level but not the lower version level so by database copy we mean that we can create homogeneous copy of a database by recovering an existing source database backup to a different compatible target database we can build test systems sandbox systems another dev systems from a copy of any system there are certain prerequisites for doing this a database copy is only possible using file based backups that is we should have file based backups available so from the source system we should have taken file based backups which must be copied to the target system and then recovered yes of course a database backup of the source system must be available and as i said version of the target system must be same or higher than the source system and target system should have sufficient disk space and memory to copy the backup files 
and for doing the recovery it should have enough disk space and also an equal memory or could be a higher memory availability and the target system configuration is usable for the recovery of the source system again we can use the configuration also for the recovery and customer specific changes should be manually applied any customer specific changes which, which must be copied from one system to other should be manually done because file system backups or file based backups will not copy this and ensure that a license key file is available for the target database because once we recover the system with the backup from another system which acts as the source system the license gets expired so we need to download a new license and install the license so during this copy we should note that sid and host names are adapted during the recovery process and target database gets automatically started at the end of the recovery and there is no impact on in memory processing on source executed on persistence level okay when we are copying the backup files there is no impact on the source system at all and what are the procedure that we normally implement to do this we have to first create the target database using a new installation and copy the required backup files to the target database backup folder that is to the disk of the target database using the storage tool or any particular os commands then run the recover target database option to recover or build the target database we can use the ana studio run the recover option there or use the command line tools to run the sql commands to recover the system and there is an improvement with the latest releases that it is possible to copy scale out sap ana database with m nodes to sap ana database with n nodes so the limitation that we had that source and target should be of the same configuration with respect to nodes is now overruled with an improvement where we can have on the source side more number of nodes compared to the target say for example a productive system is running with 10 nodes but i don't need a test system with 10 nodes i can create a test system with just two nodes so copy from 10 nodes to two nodes is possible now with the latest releases now let us understand the concept of database cloning there are two types of database cloning available online and offline and this cloning technique can be applied with the use of storage system or using filer snapshots see by definition cloning is done using the underlying storage system for consistency a database wide snapshot of the data area is used for cloning purpose similar to procedure for data backup we take the entire snapshot and then use it for cloning and after the database has been cloned the snapshot is removed from the source database again similar to storage snapshot and the snapshot in the cloned database is renamed and restored during the first restart so automatic adaptation of the target database also takes place here coming to online database cloning sap ana database provides the capability to clone a database using storage system so online is done using the storage system and what is the procedure during online operation of the source database we create an internal database snapshot like how it happens in storage snapshot and then using the storage system copy the whole source database in the source database remove the internal database snapshot and then rename the target database using an on site configuration tool we have something called as on site configuration tool or we can use the life cycle management tool to rename the target database and then start the target database using the internal database snapshot so we just copy the snapshot from source to target rename the target database and then start the system which works with the snapshot copy so this is called as online cloning in online 
the automatic adaption runs automatically and smoothly coming to offline database cloning here sap ana database provides capability to clone a database using filer snapshots whereas in online it used storage system to copy here it is filer snapshots okay how it works while well, the source database is offline create a filer snapshot of the database so this leads to two databases with the same name so using the renaming program that is htb rename utility which is available in this path that is usr sap sidcs global htb install bin we will rename the target database and then target database is automatically restarted and then we can restart the source database so here we take a filer snapshot and provide it to the target database and then prepare the target database by renaming it and then target database automatically connects to the snapshot provided and then restart the source database so that both the databases are now available compared to online database cloning offline database cloning is considered as more consistent since we are copying an offline data from the source database whereas the online database may not be consistent because the data would be still being changed and the logs would be still being written during which we take the snapshot so it would not have the complete consistent data so if we need consistent data it makes sense we choose offline database cloning which works with filer snapshot but this comes with a drawback that we need downtime of the productive system so this was about the database copy using the cloning techniques so with this we have come to the end of the topic so in this session we have clearly understood what are backups what are recoveries how to do the configuration for backup and recovery how to trigger backup and recovery how to do storage snapshotting how to use them for recovering and how to do database copy and how to use the cloning techniques for doing the database copy